All right, what's good? Uh, a couple days ago, I got a comment from Ira Coleman about the Godox lights. He was saying, uh, appreciate the video. Can you show some footage of the light setup and usage? So I'm gonna do that today. Um, I got two of them. Keep in mind that the soft boxes that were featured in my last video do not come with the lighting setup unless you order a whole kit. And I'm not even sure that these come in any kits. But anyway, I'll go over the soft boxes afterwards. So here's the light. Focus here. There we go. Okay, that's the light you see. It does have a switch here. It does have function buttons and such for changing the channels and changing the group. And this button here, you press to get back to the percentage, the intensity, and it does come with a pretty long cord. This is the basic light. It does have a mount on the end. I've got some, let me grab my other camera. That's gonna make a lot more sense. You'll notice that this light is the um, chip type. It's one single chip is about an inch by an inch. Looks like that's a heat sink to help keep down the heat. And as I was showing you earlier, you do have, you do have an on off switch here. You do have the power input this chooses the group of the channel. This is how you set the brightness. Um, they each come with remotes. What I have done is I have set up this light over here to run on channel two, and this light, which I put up over here, is going to be channel one. Now I can either use a separate remote per light, or I can just use the same remote and just switch channels as I need to bump them up or down. Keep in mind, you can run multiple lights on the same channel or the same group. The reason I'm not doing that is because I want to be able to independently control the temperature of the lights as well as the intensity. So I will be running, this is my key light, and this right here will be a fill light. I also have um, a hair light up here. And everything I run is between 55 and 5600 Kelvin. So, turn the camera sideways so you can see this. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this on. All right, so you see, as I control this, that controls the intensity of the light. The higher, the brighter, okay? Notice it's on channel two. It's on group A. If I want to change group and channel, I click this button. That's the group. It's got six groups, A through F. And it also has channels. It has 16 channels. So there's 16 channels times six groups. I do want to make one point that the light here, when you control intensity here, and you control intensity here, Notice that the light matches what the remote is saying. However, when I adjust this on the light itself, so it's on 75, right? On the remote, it's on 51. Watch what happens to the light when I press the plus on the remote. The light jumps back to what the remote is on. So that actually is kind of a design flaw. I would think that they would communicate bi-directionally, but they do not. Uh, but I don't care because I'll never control the light with the light itself. I'll always be using a remote. I'm gonna turn it down to the lowest intensity I can, which will be 10%. If I can get this to focus on the remote. There we go. So this is at 10%. I'm gonna step back and let you look at the intensity. Intensity of this light while I'm making adjustments on the remote. Okay, so we're at 14% and we're just gonna go up. Notice it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. 
Don't need to use the full brightness in most situations. Okay. These lights do come with this. Notice this. They do come with this. Connect it like so. And it locks into place. Of course, I'm not using this. I'm using the soft box. So I will disconnect this. Okay, so on to the soft box. I want to show you uh, a design flaw in the soft boxes. This is the connector for the soft box. This goes on the back of the soft box that I got. And this is what actually comes with the light. Okay, but there is a problem in that these little connections here are different lengths. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. If you put these side by side, you'll notice that the gray one is slightly shorter than the black one. And, and that causes a problem because when you connect this to the light, just that small difference in length makes it to where this can be removed without pulling the switch. Like so. And that means light boxes or anything else with this type of connection on it can very well come loose when you don't intend for them to. You should always have to pull this switch down to remove anything that's connected to that. But I came up with a solution. What I did is I just took some standard wire from a wire clothes hanger, cut it and bent it into a shape. What I do is once I have the light in place, I take this and I slide this into the gap and it basically gives some extra tension here to keep the light from being able to slide back out of position. Now the light cannot move. It's kind of a tacky rig, but hey, if it works, it works. And that could save my equipment. So I've got that on each light to keep it from disconnecting from whatever type of attachment I have on it. If you come up with a better solution, please send me your ideas. When you first get these, you'll see, you'll receive eight of these tension rods. They connect to little holes that are in this circle here. And then you just run them into little slots on the corners. And you just basically even them out. Next thing you do, this is what it looks like before you add the back panel. I'm gonna strip this other one down just so you can see it from the, all steps. So now I have stripped it down to show you this back panel is missing too, okay? So the first thing you get is a diffuser. There are little Velcro tabs on this, and you just line them up and connect. So of course that diffuses your light, makes your light, your light uh, softer. But here's the beauty of this light. Is, it comes with two diffusers. So the second one, when you install it, this whole thing up here is a Velcro strip. Don't connect it all the way at the top, the outer rim. Connect it on the inner rim. Leave about half an inch at the top, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So, put that on there like this. Okay, so that's your second diffuser. Now, the reason you left that half inch 
perimeter around there of Velcro is so you could then add the grid. The grid will allow you to have more control over the direction of your light, you know, so keep your light right on your subject. Just take the outer perimeter of Velcro right here. All right, so there it is with the grid. I'm gonna do a quick setup just to let you see how the lighting is and off all the other lights. I'm only gonna use one light though. All my studio lighting is wireless, by the way. Let's see what we got here. Let's take this. I'm gonna raise this. Bring this in some. About right here. See what my shot looks like. I'm gonna minimize this because I'm getting light from this and I don't want that to affect my lighting. Okay, so right now, even with two diffusers, even with two diffusers and only a 10%, that's what the light looks like, okay? Um, it's not a good positioning or anything. I'm just giving you an example. So let's turn it up. One thing you'll notice though, is that uh, the light on this camera, I have it set to automatically adjust. Uh, the camera's automatically adjusting, so you won't be able to see the difference there. But anyway, let's see. You should be able to see it on this one. So that was from 10% and I'm going all the way up to 100%. And that's one light with two diffusers on it. What I wanna show you is uh, putting this back part on. It also has Velcro on it. And you basically just begin putting it on. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any more questions about these lights or these soft boxes or anything else I've shown in the video today, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Deuces. <laughs>